Hello everyone and welcome to our lecture on on Welcome to our chemistry lecture by Ed Softer Chemistry Jam UTME Tutorials. Ed Softer Chemistry Jam UTME Tutorials. Sorry about that. Chemistry Jam UTME Tutorials. All right, so so this tutorial is brought to you by Edsofter, and Edsofter is a software software um, education solution company. So what we do is that right, we produce we we have an app that prepares students for Jam DTNE for WAEC. And it has past questions, study materials, and many other features that help students prepare for exam. For this tutorial, we'll be solving questions from the Edsofter app. Visit Google Play or Android phone and search for Edsofter and install it. So that's how you install it for your phone. Then if you want to use it on the desktop, you can go to our website and download for desktop. Go to our website, go to the products page. You choose whatever product you like. There's a product on Jam DTM and there's a product on Wike there. You can download it and you just need a token of 1,500 to activate it, to buy the activation pin for you to be able to activate and use all the full features of the app. So for this tutorial session, we have done balancing of equation more ratio. So we'll be going to electrolysis. We'll be going to electrolysis. So today we'll be talking about electrolysis in chemistry, what electrolysis stands for, and what electrolysis is all about. Okay. So hope we are. So we'll start with the first. What is electrolysis? And electrolysis is the chemical decomposition of a compound, which takes place when an electric current is passed through either a solution or the molten form of the compound. Electrolysis is the chemical decomposition of a compound, which takes place when an electro electric current is passed through either a solution or the molten form of that compound so now we all know that what is we all know that what decomposition is so if you have a a, a solution or you have a, a compound let's say Na2CO3 that's sodium trihydrocarbonate 5 and you are asked just sodium trihydrocarbonate 4 and you are asked to tell us the 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 and you're asked the decomposition decomposition means that everything is going to be separated that's any will be separated decomposition means to decompose to break so to to break up the compound so in order to to break up the compound and what so you need you have a a combined state of any to co3 how do you get just sodium from it you have a combined state of of copper how do you get just copper out of that combined state the, so electrolysis is one of the methods that helps us to for us to be able to get out copper or get out a particular um compound from a solution um, um without without going through rigorous process so what is an electrolyte the compound either in solution or motive form that conducts elect elect electric current and is decomposed at the electrodes is the pro at in the products. So examples of such um, compounds that can act as electrolytes are acids, alkalis, acids and alkalis. What are alkalis? Soluble bases, bases that can dissolve in water. Soluble bases, bases that can dissolve in water. So electrodes, electrodes, these are 
electrodes. These are conductors which electric current passes through. So they are conductors which electric current passes through. I would love to just, I would love to just, you know, so that we can just see uh, a diagram of what it should look like. So, So you have something like this. So this is the electrolyte. Let's say it's in solution form, not in multi from here. Then you have So you have this that we have here are what we call the, the electrodes. So then we have our what? Our supply. We have our DC current supply. So this is your electrolytes. This is your electrode. This is the battery that supplies current. So as current is passing through, as current is passing through, as current is passing through, this current makes it, makes the compound within here to decompose. It makes the molten to decompose thereby. So if you had, if you have a situation where you have a combined state of CuSO4, so once you start to decompose this thing, you see that what you have Cu will separate, SO, S will separate, O will separate because of what the electric current has been passed through the the through the electrolyte, and that way you can reserve just your Cu alone. So that's one usage of, of electrolysis. You have a combined state of, 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 of sodium, but you need only sodium. You don't want this one with it. What do you do? You perform electrolysis on this. What does it do? It's what? It separates the word sodium away. So it decomposes it. Decomposes means that what? It breaks the, cap, the compound into what? Smaller what? Pieces. That is what electrolysis the process of electrolysis does so let's let's continue let's continue so now there are two types of electrode the anode this is the positive electrode where current enters the electrolyte this is the positive electrode where current ent enters the electrolyte or by which electrons leave the electrolyte or by which electrons leave the electrolyte or by which electrons leave the electric electrolyte cathode this is the this is the negative electrode
then we have what we have cathode this is the negative electrode by which current leaves the electrolyte 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 then the electrolytic cell this is now the whole process the when you combine everything together it is called what an electrolytic cell so this contains of the electrolytes this contains of the electrolyte so this whole this whole setup that we have here this whole setup that we have here is the word electrolytic is the electrolytic cell this whole setup that we have here is the word electrolytic word cell so now let's move on let's move on um so now preferential discharge of ion during electrolysis so like i said during electrolysis the composition of of atoms happen the composition of atom atom atoms happen which allow them to release so to move to to go away from their combined state into their what singular state so the compounds no more combined everything is now in their what singular what state so position so there are three things that affect the preferential discharge of ion during electrolysis so what happens in essence is that when you are performing when you are performing an ele electrolysis on a particular compound that is in solution electrolysis on Na2CO3 now Na2CO3 is made up of two ions this ion so two this ion and this ion but now what comes to mind is that at some point during the electrolysis some body is going to have to be what discharged discharge in the sense that what the person is that particular element is going to be moved from not just his ionic state back to his what his elemental state so you have a combined state of Na2CO3 but you only need sodium what you find in the sea what you find close to the sea is salt and what is salt salt is the combined state of what sodium and what chlorine but you only need sodium to be what discharged you only need sodium so you perform electrolysis on that sodium chloride that salt solution so that what you can get what sodium to come out but the problem with the issue now is that there are certain conditions that determine whether whether who is going to be discharged at the end of the day so there's a way you can perform your electrolysis if those certain conditions are not met you'll find out that you, you are not able to discharge your NaCl. you are not able to actually perform it to actually decompose the compound why because you didn't follow certain conditions you didn't allow certain conditions to happen so there are three of those conditions that we have and the conditions are let me put it up on the screen are the position of ions in the electrochemical series so what is the electrochemical series the electrochemical series is like the series that shows the power or the potential of this particular element so you have of met and it consists more of metal so you have situations where most of us should have seen it in our elementary um, chemistry that we have been doing where you have um they tell you stuff like um you see potassium is first you see sodium is next then you know you see lithium is first you see lithium is first you see lithium is first You see lithium is first, you see potassium, you see sodium, 
you see magnesium, you see um, aluminium, you see um, ZN. So this is the list of the electric chemical solids that we are going down, still going down. We have um, Fe, we have SN, we have PB, we have H+, plus, we have hydrogen, then we have copper, then we have HG, then we have AG, which is your silver, then you have what? AU. Now, you can see that what? The, this is an electrochemical series telling us the strength of the electropositivity of these metals, the strength at which these metals reject electron, the strength at which these metals reject electron, the strength at which these metals react. So what this electrochemical series tells us is what? Who reacts faster than the other? So lithium now reacts more than uh, potassium. That's why lithium uh, potassium reacts more than any. And as you keep going down, keep going down, you see that what? The least reactive in the electrochemical series that we have written here is gold, which is AU. The least reactive is gold, which is AU. Then what? You have silver, you have mercury, you have copper, you have hydrogen, you have lead, you have um, um, thin, tin, you have um, iron, you have zinc, you have aluminium, you have magnesium, you have sodium, you have potassium, then you have lithium. So are you seeing that electric, so the electrochemical series now shows us, so based on who is higher. So if you have an electric, you have a, a situation between sodium and hydrogen, sodium will what? Be released first, why? Because sodium is what? Higher in the what? Electrochemical what? Series. That is what? All, that is, that about what? that condition for what preferential discharge during electrolysis okay the next one is concentration so now this one is now the concentration so if you have a concentrated form of if you have a concentrated form of of a particular, or if you add more sodium, more, more sodium, and you can see that sodium is more concentrated, obviously, than the other positive um, ion, sodium will be what? Discharged. If you have, so concentration also is a driving force. So there are even some times when um, the, the, first the first preference, that's the position of ions, passes it for a particular element to go. Okay, the, the, it passes sodium to go. But because there is a higher concentration of hydrogen, hydrogen would go. Or you have situations where, so that is one part. Then the last one is what? The nature of electrodes. Now this tells us the type of electrode. So depending on the type of electrode, whether there is going to be what? A, a whether there is going to be, whether the, whether who is going to be discharged. Now for, for reasons, for now, for, some reasons that we have is that if you have, if you use a mercury electrode, you use a mercury electrode. Most times, if you use a mercury electrode when you are performing the electrolysis of brine that is concentrated um, um, NaCl, you will notice that mercury has an affinity for uh, magnesium. By affinity, we mean some sort of likeness for magnesium. So mercury wants to be attached to its. Um, 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 sodium, sorry, sodium. Mercury wants to be attached with sodium. So you see that in such um, electrolysis, sodium will always be what? Discharged. Sodium will be discharged. Why? Because mercury has some sort of love for sodium. Mercury will be what? So sodium will be what? Discharged. That is the part of the nature of electrodes. So let's go on. Let's go on. So now, we're moving to, okay, before that, let's look at some of the electrolysis of some common electrolytes that we know. So let's, let's, so this is where we go into the science of electrolysis. Talk about that for a few, a few minutes before we move back to um, this thing. Then we can now say we want to talk about questions. Okay, so some examples of electrolytes that we know. So we can talk about um, the electrolysis of um, concentrated NaCl, the electrolysis of concentrated NaCl. 
So the electrolysis of concentrated NSCL. So that's brine solution. Now, in this case, what you have to note. What you have to note is what you have to note is that what you have to note is that is that so we have since it's a solution there is NaCl and there's what the solvent which is what H2O NaCl will produce two what we have the anions anions are what the negative ions why cations are what? The positive ions. So anions, we have what? NaCl. We have Cl minus here and OH minus. We have um, Na plus and what? H plus. So we have two ions here and two ions here. And just as we have an electrochemical series for the cations, we also have an electrochemical series for the what anions. Let me see if I can write that. So we have fluorine, which is the highest, SO4 2 minus, NO3 2 minus, CO minus, Br minus, I minus, and OH minus. So now we now have this electrolysis. So we want to know who is going to be discharged between this one and this one. And we know so. For this electrolysis, we'll be using what? The cathode, platinum cathode, platinum or carbon cathode, pl uh, platinum or carbon cat um, cathode, and the um, an um, carbon anode, and the carbon anode. So we know that what? The anode is what? Is the, uh, the cathode is where the oxidation will what, take place. So this is the cathode. This is the cathode. So we have cathode. So we have the cathode where we have, so at the cathode, that's where the anions will what, go and settle. So that's where it is going to be discharged. So what is going to happen is you have something like this. You have your cathode, smooth cathode, smooth anode. But you notice that at the end of this, at the end of the reaction, you will see that the discharged, the discharged elements will come to come and stay on the cathode stay on the body of the cathode and those that are going to be discharged at the anode also will stay on the body of the anode so that's where you hear things like you are discharged at the cathode discharged at the anode so at the cathode is the cations that be discharged now now who is going to be discharged who is going to be who is going to be discharged between these two so now we know that this one will go to the cathode wire because they are what positive, and this one will go to the anode wire because they are what negative. The anode is the positive um, electrode, so the anions will go to the positive because negative will attract positive. The cathode is the negative, so the positive will go to the cathode because the positive will attract negative. So what will happen is that what will happen is that the the so at the anode we will have a context between the Na plus and the and the what and the, the H plus. So who is going to be preferentially discharged? Now, if you look at your electrochemical electrochemical series, you will remember that we had we talked about we wrote a list of them. Now this is where exceptions in chemistry come to be. This is where what exceptions in chemistry come to be. This is where what exception in chemistry come to what to be.
this is where exceptions in chemistry come to be. All right. So you will see that in this uh, electrochemical series, you see that the distance between your Na and your H plus is a bit too wide. Is a bit too wide. So now we were told that what it is the position of the atoms. Now, but most times it is usually the higher one that is usually discharged. The higher placed one that is going to be usually discharged. But because the distance between Na and H plus on the electrochemical series is high, and there is no affinity between Na and the cathode or the anode because they are what? They are just normal platinum or carbon rods. So what is going to happen is that the, the H plus is going to be discharged at the anode. And I always say at the cathode, there's going to be what we call an oxidation reaction. And for an oxidation reaction, the, el the electron is at the left side. So you have this. So you have two here, you have two here, and you have what? H2. H2 is going to be what? Discharged. Yeah. H2 being what? Discharged. Then we now have at the other part, at the other end, we now have at the anode, which we know that's where the anions are going to because the anions are going to the positive what? Cathode. So we know that what? CL. We know that what? CL is going to be, CL is going to be because the distance is not much. And we said that what? Usually it is the higher electrode that what? That is. So this is an exception to the rule, but, but, so based on the position, usually higher, that's Na is supposed to be discharged. But because of the distance in the positioning of these two, we can't say N is going to be discharged. Instead, it is H plus that will be what? Discharged. But C or minus is going to be discharged in this case based on what? The position of the ion on the what? Negative electrochemical what? series. So we have something like this. So for, 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 for anode, there's going to be a reduction, um, reduction, um, a reduction um, equation. So electron is going to have to be at the left side. So this reduction equation. So at the anode, there's a reduction equation. And at the cathode, we have an oxidation equation, an oxidation equation. So this is just an example. This is just an, an easy example on preferential discharge of, of the electrolysis of brine. Preferential discharge of the electrolysis of brine. Preferential discharge of the electrolysis of brine. Okay. So let's move to what we have on the next slide. So we now have laws of electrolysis. These laws of electrolysis we are going to use to solve a lot more equations. We are going to use to solve a lot more equations. So we have Faraday's first law of electrolysis. And Faraday's first law of electrolysis tells us that the law states that the mass of a substance liberated at, the, at an electrode during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passing through the electrolyte. The mass of a substance liberated at an electrode during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passing through the electrolyte. Mathematically, M is, oh wow, I didn't show. So M is, so I can show the mathematical equation here. M is, so I won't be cleaning the electrochemical chemical series since we might still need it. So it's telling us that what? The mass is directly proportional to the what? Amount of charge. And we know that charge is equals to what? IT from our elementary physics. 
So we know that M will be equal to what? E I T. While this is a constant, and that constant is known as this is a constant. This is a constant, and that constant is known as the electrochemical equivalence of a substance, the electrochemical equivalence of a substance. Then the, the second law is Faraday's second law of electrolysis. The law states that when the same quantity of electricity is passed through different electrolytes, the relative number of moles of the elements deposited are inversely proportional to the charges on the ion of the element. So this is this is just, this law is telling us that the quantity of electricity is inversely proportional to the mole, to the number of mole. The number of mole is inversely proportional to the what amount of charges on the ions of the element. So the higher the mole, the lower the number of electrons. The lower the mole, the more the number of electrons. And the quantity of electricity is called Faraday. So the uses of electrolysis, we have extraction and purification of metal. So that's what I was trying to say um, when I started. I said you have an, an, an element in its combined state. So in its combined state, you have most elements, most metals, when they are mining them, they mine them in their combined state. So for aluminum, we have something that you call bauxite. Bauxite is what? Al2O3. Now, they, they need to discharge this. They need to get air. What do you do? You perform electrolysis. You put it in a solution form. When you put it in a solution form, you have what? Two electrons. You have the Al3+, plus, and you have what? The H+, plus, and you have what? The O2-, minus, and you have the what? OH-, what? minus. Or you still have the OH- minus because of um, the O3. But at the end of the day, you begin to see that the... Based on what preferential discharge, you know that what the air will be what discharged at the cathode, and that way you can get your pure form of air. So that is the beauty of electrolysis. It gives you the pure form of that element. It gives you the pure form of that element. It gives you the pure form of that element. Then the last use is the electroplating. The last use is the electroplating. So electroplating is just like you have your metal ion, but you don't want it to rust, but you know that ion rust when it's in metal. Now, instead of you to maybe use a very expensive metal like silver, just because you don't want it to rust, what do you do? You can coat this word metals. And how do you coat the metals? You can coat the metals by using electrolysis. So you just, you just, you just use that metal. So use that ion as the electrode. Like I said earlier, these things are deposited on the body of the electrodes. So you just use, so if it's a gold, if it's a chain, you have to make it golden. What do you do? You use that chain as the what? As the what? Electrode. You use the chain as the what? Electrode. You use the chain as the electrode. And by the time you have, you put another electrode, you have your box, use the chain. So you now, so let's say it's thin. You what? You have your electrolysis. You pass your current through it. You pass your current through it. You will notice that what? It will just come and stay on the body of, of the, that way you have what? That way you have, you have. So that's it. That way, you have electroplated your chain to gold to whatever you want to electroplate it to. So it's cheaper and it's 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 it also lasts for a while. So those are the two major uses. Those are the two major uses of electrolysis. The two major uses of electrolysis. That the two major uses of electrolysis. The two major uses of electrolysis. So this is so we are going to be moving to the Etsofta app for us to see 
um, if we can solve some questions, we're going to move the X server app for us to see if we can solve some questions on electrolysis. If we can solve some questions on electrolysis. So we're going to practice the exam. I remove the timer. Practice by topic. We go to chemistry. So this is the edge of that app, as you can see. This is starting. There's practice exam. There's read. And there's, there's read and listen to study materials. There are plugins. There is a number of features that you can use. So we just do this. You can you can decide to do it with timer, but we don't need the timer. Then we move to what? Practice questions. We go to chemistry, select topics. We can unselect all. So that what we can choose what electrolysis. We can choose electrolysis and answer questions on electrolysis. I choose so that we can see as many questions as we want. So now, the product of electrolysis of dilute sodium. So, sodium product of dilute sodium hydroxide using platinum electrodes. Now, this is like the one we did earlier, where I told you we have what? We are going to have So we are going to have what? Sodium hydroxide. So you have NaOH and you have what? H2O. Since it is in solution form. So you have your anion, you have your cation. Cation positive one, you have Na plus and you have H plus. You have OH minus here. You also have what? OH minus here. Now in this case, you don't need to stress yourself. You, we, 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 we said that we based on preferential discharge. And we know that what? This one. Because we said that what the distance is a bit too high, so so um, hydrogen is going to be discharged. You know that hydrogen will be discharged. And for the case of OH, OH is going to be discharged, and OH does not get discharged as just OH. OH get because both of them are OH, OH, OH gets discharged as as. So we have this. This is the form it gets discharged as. So it gets discharged as what oxygen. So oxygen is just discharged and also what H2 is what discharged. So you have your what? Um, um, you have your, your, your equation. And that's all. So your answer is what? Hydrogen and what? Oxygen gases. So the most suitable that can be used this is not, okay? Or we can answer silver. Silver is the most suitable metal for conduction. Why? It has high electrical conductivity because it is on the lower. So the lower you are on the electrochemical series, the more your electro, your electro, your elect, your elect, electrical conductivity. So the higher ones on the electrochemical series, they don't have as high electric conductivity. It's the lower ones that have higher electric conductivity. So you see why most times they use copper. The best to use is silver, actually, but we can't just use gold because gold is gold is um, very very precious and expensive. But the the most uh, and silver too is also expensive to what prepare. So the, the most suitable that that we use that we see around is copper, and that's why you hear people say copper wire, copper wire, copper wire, because what it has it is low on the electrochemical series, so it is a what a better conductor of electricity. Let's go on. So now, in recharging a lead, oh, this is electrochemical, okay? So now let's look at this. This is one of the questions I want us to see. How many farad of electricity of electricity is required to produce 0 0.25 mole of copper? How many farad of electricity is required to produce 0 0.25 mole of copper.
So now, what you have to notice when you are solving these kind of questions is that one e minus is going to give us one f, which is going to give us nine six five zero zero what color. So what you have to do is first you need to write the ionic equation. What did I say? Are you, you can just use this electrochemical series to know the ionic equation. You need to write the ionic equation. So what did they talk about? What did they ask us for? They asked us for copper. Copper. And we know that copper is what? Copper is what? Cu2 plus from what we have here. And we know what? Plus what? 2e minus is going to reserve to give us what C. So there are two electrons that are going to be given up. Two electrons that are going to be given up for one mole of what? For one mole of copper. Based on our what? On the ratio. It is one to one to what? One. So what you can now say is one mole of copper. So if one E is going to give us 96500 what? Columns. One mole of copper is the same thing as what? As the same thing as what? Two. So one mole of copper is what? One mole of copper is two electrons. It's going to discharge two electrons. And these two electrons will serve as two times the 96500 that we have here. The 96500 that we have here. So it will take... 96500 times 2, which is what? 19300 Coulomb. So if you take 19300 Coulomb to what? Discharge 1 mole of what? CU. 1900, 193000 Coulomb to what? Discharge 1 mole of CU. But now we need to find. But now. We need to find. We need to find. The question was asking us. The question was asking us to what? To find the um, find how many Faraday of electricity is required to produce zero point two five mole of copper. So what do we do? What do we do? What we do is that we we'll first. So we need to first know 0 0.25 mole of copper. So if one mole of copper is this, 0 0.25 mole of copper will be how many coulomb? That's what we need to know first. Will be how many what? Coulomb, that's X. And X will be what? 19300 times 0.25. And what do we have? Let's check the calculator. So we have four eight two five zero. Four eight two four eight two five zero. So four eight two five zero columns. So this is the amount of columns that is going to be what discharged. But we are not done. We are not done. We are what? We are not what done. Now they are asking us for the, the amount of farad. We know that one farad from what we have here. Is what 96500 Coulomb. So one farad is going to be what? One farad is going to be what? One farad is going to be one farad is going to be if one farad is 96500 Coulomb. Then 48250 Coulomb is going to be what? X what? Farad. What do we do? We cross multiply to find X. So X will be what? X times 96500 is equal to what? 1 times 4. Sorry. 
x times 96500 is going to be 48250 times what? 1. So we need x. What will x be? x will be what? 48250 all over 96500. And our answer will be 0 0.50 words. So you see, first, you need to know the equation. And how do you know the equation based on what your electrochemical sense tells you? You can know the equation. Then after just, not just knowing the equation, not just knowing the equation, you also need to know that, you, you also need to know this, this, um, this relationship here, that one electron, is one or at least one farad of electricity, and one farad of electricity is equivalent to 9,000, 9,500 coulombs of electricity. So, with that, knowing this, the amount of coulombs of electricity, you can find one mole. I know that one mole of Cu is two electrons. So, two electrons will be what? 19300 coulombs of what? Electricity. So, 0 0.25 mole of Cu will be what 48,250 coulombs of what electricity you can now convert that 48,250 coulombs of electricity based on our relationship that we have here to to coulomb to what farad to farad so let's take a look at more questions let's take a look at more questions so which of the following halogens is the most reactive fluorine yes that's the highest electric, electric negativity. Yes. As you can see, this is on also uh, on this on the on this place on the on the electrochemical series. It can you can see that the electrochemical series can help you to what to get or understand that better. So let's continue. Um, let's see if we can find more questions. So the electricity of the anode is so carbon, carbon is yes, the anode is carbon for electrolysis of brine. Yes. So see this. Calculate the amount of moles of silver deposited when 9650 coulombs of electricity is passed through a solution. I'm coming. So we should calculate. Let me. Okay, so as you can see that, so now they said, so they were, the question is saying that we should find, we should calculate the amount of moles in silver deposited when 9650 coulombs of electricity is passed through a solution of silver salt. So first, like I said, we need to first know what the word equation. And for silver, we have what? Ag plus. For silver, we have what? Ag plus. Please pardon my, pardon me here. I made a mistake. A, Ag plus. So what we have here is just going to be Ag plus plus one electron is going to give us what Ag. So you see that for Fe two, since it's two plus, so it will be what two electrons 
to give what fe so based on So AG plus is what is, is E plus. Let's give us AG. So that means from our mole ratio, you see everything is connected. We are still doing the mole ratio again. So we know that what one electron is going to just give us what one mole of what AG. It since this equation is balanced. One electron is giving us what one mole of what AG. One mole of what AG. So what do we now? How do we now make get our answer. They told us that the amount of electricity they are going to pass through is what? 9650 watt Coulomb. 9650 watt Coulomb. But we all know from our, from our, this thing, let me write it here. One farad is one electron, which is saying that 96500 watt Coulomb. We know that one electron is going to give us 96500 watt Coulomb, which means it's going to give us one mole of what? Silver. One mole of silver. So what do we need? What we need, but now, but, but we know, but how many, what's the charge that they are passing? The charge that they are passing is what? 9650, 9650. So 9650 Coulomb is going to give us X watts, X moles of silver. So we are trying to find how many moles of silver. All we need to do is cross multiply. We know that X times 96500 is what nine six five zero zero times one what mole? Then what x is going to be what nine six five zero zero all over sorry nine six five zero all over nine six five zero zero. This will cancel, cancel, fill out themselves. We have one over ten and we have what zero point two one mole. So 9650 can only and would only liberate 0 0.1 mole of silver. Let's move on. So look at this. Which of the following ions requires the largest quantity of electricity for discharge? So this, just make sure that you look at the number of moles and you look at what the amount of what... Um, 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 I look at the amount of um, AL3 plus. So the answer would be two moles of AL3 plus. Why? Because it's three electrons. Just multiply the three by 2.0, and that's six. But this CL, this CL will be 4.0 times C, times NA is just three. Um, CU is 2.5 times two, which is just five. But the greatest is what AL three plus three moles of AL. Outside this, a metal N displaces zinc from ZNC. So this shows that now, for a metal to displace another metal, it means that it is higher on the electrochemical series than that metal. It is higher on the electrochemical series than that metal. And what it means is that it is electro positive it is more electropositive than that metal take a look at this so this means that this means that this means that what the zn is so it, So what it means is that if K, since K plus is the highest, it means that K plus is more electropositive than any plus because it is the higher. So K plus will displace any plus from a reaction. That's why if you have something like this, Mg reacting with HCl, you will end up with HCl displacing Mg and not having something like Why? Because Mg is higher on the electrochemical series than H plus. Or you have a situation where you have um, H plus itself, H uh, reacting with maybe CuSO4. What is going to happen is that what? 
it is c u is going to be what displaced y because c is what pardon that the reaction might not be um okay it's balanced because h is what higher than what c u in the world electrochemical series h is higher than the c u electrochemical series meaning it is more electropositive than it if it was the negative electrochemical series it means that fluorine is more electronegative than the rest So let's see if we can still attempt more questions. So we see this in the electrolysis of this is the reaction at the anode is yes, is there. So I said the reaction for oxygen for OH is not just the random OH, it is this 4OH 4OH minus. Is going to give us two. Sorry, two H two plus O two plus plus four E minus plus four E what minus. So this is our equation for oxygen when is being liberated. So the commonest features of reaction at the anode is a yes. Reaction at the anode is oxidation and cathode is reaction at the anode at the anode is reduction in the electrolysis and at the cathode is. So the property of chlorine, which causes hydrogen chloride to be more ionic than chlorine because of its electronegativity, yes, because it is higher than it of the electrochemical series. So in the extraction of sodium from sodium chloride, that is where we are saying that what that's one of the uses of what electrolysis. It is used in the what and the reaction in the what in the extraction of metals. Yeah. So let's this this would be. Oh, let me see if we can see any more um, questions. So look at this one. Calculate the mass of magnesium that will be deposited by eight Faradays of electricity. Eight Faradays of electricity. First, what do you do? You write your what equation. First, what do you do? Write your equation. He said, calculate the mass of magnesium that will be liberated by what? Eight Faradays of electricity. First, what do you do? You write your what equation. Magnesium is what? Mg2 plus. Sorry about this. Mg2 plus. M2 plus plus 2e minus is going to give us what? Mg. So two electrons are needed. And we know one electron is what? Is one farad. So two electrons will be how many farad? Two farads. But how many farads are we are being liberated? Are, are they introducing to us eight farads? So one mole is giving us what? Two farad needs two farad of electricity. So that means eight farads will be what will be what four moles from the calculation by that we do the calculation so this is two times four eight so one times four four moles so what is four moles what's the gram mass of four moles of of mg we know that what mass will be what mole times molar mass because mole is equal to mass over molar mass so mass will be mole times molar mass what is our mole for what is our molar mass 24 that's molar mass of um mg our answer is 96 grams so this is just the we have looked at the basic kind of questions that comes out come out electrolysis for jam and electrolysis for jam and electrolysis for jam when cathode rays are deflected onto the electrode of electrometer the instrument becomes negative charge yes because what we said the cathode, cathode is what negative the cathode is what negative we said the cathode is negatively charged what electrode so we can solve this we should be able to solve this okay let's solve this 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 question this will be our last question when question 30. 
this will be our last question under electrolysis and we'll call it um, okay. so let's just solve the last question we'll come in. Okay, so okay, so let's look at the question again. The question is saying that which what quantity of aluminium is deposited when a current of ten amperes is passed through a solution of aluminium salt. Current of 10 amperes is passed through a solution of aluminium salt for 1,930 seconds. So first, what we need to do is to find the quantity of electricity. Quantity of electricity is IT. I is what? 10. And T is what? 1,930 seconds. So this will be 10 times 1,930 seconds. Our answer, quantity of electricity is 1,930 what? Coulomb. So once they give you current and time, the first thing you do is to find the amount of what charge. They want us to find quantity of aluminium deposited. So first, we know aluminium. We first, as usual, we do what we write our what equation. So we have three electrons this time because aluminium is what Al3. So what do we do? How do we now find the quantity? of um, the amount of uh, the quantity of aluminum deposited that's the quantity that's going to be in grams if this is the amount of electricity that was passed through so we need to know we can know the amount so for one mole of aluminum we need what we know we, we are going to discharge what three watts electrons three watts electron Three watts electron based on our what more ratio one to three to what one. So three electrons and these three electrons means what three times our what nine six five zero zero C, which based on our one is equals to one F, which is what's a nine six five zero zero C. So if we have this as one mole, we now want to find how many moles is one nine three zero zero. So X mole. Is going to be what one nine three zero zero c so we are looking for how many moles how many moles would this give us so we can what or oh, let's just write it in one so we know that what yeah.
sorry, since the since the there was a break in um, there was a little um, issue, but. Sorry for the break again. So we're just rounding up actually. We've done, so this is the Edsofter app and the tutorial brought to you by Edsofter. We'll be starting again for the last tutorial. So we'll be starting again for the tutorial for the biology and also the electrochemical and also the chemical equilibrium. So please, Please and um, please just please and um, please just endeavor to whatever questions you have you have you can send it to us you can post it so that we can solve some of the issues 
the app is good the app is good for you to prepare for your jam and best of luck in your jam thank you very much and god bless you